hello students i welcome you all to my channel engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet now we are going to solve these two problems so the first problem says that the 180 pound man climbs up the ladder and stops at the position shown after he senses that the ladder is on the verge of slipping determine the inclination theta of the ladder if the coefficient of static friction between the friction paired at a and the ground is 0.4 assume the wall is at b is smooth so from this if the wall is smooth then there is no friction at point b the center of gravity for the man is at g neglect the weight of the ladder so both the problems are having the same statement but in the first problem we are given mu s and theta is required and in the second problem theta is given and mu s is required so first of all we will find the generic equation for both the problems and then we will apply the givens in that equation and then we will be able to find the solution of both the problems so now let's say that uh, this blue line let's say represent that later it's the free body diagram so at b we will have the normal force on the later which is uh, the normal force will be applied on by the wall on the later so this is uh, this is let's say and b so this is and b and then at A uh, again uh, the floor will be applying the normal force so that is N A and if the ladder is on the verge of slipping so it will slip towards the right so the friction force is going to act towards the uh, left so let me show that here we will have the friction force and this will be equal to mu s time N A and <coughs> the main is somewhere here right so let's say that its center of gravity is uh, somewhere here let's say let's say that here is the center of gravity so here it's uh, his weight will be acting vertically downward and that weight is um, 180 pounds so let me write this is 180 pounds now the 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 center of gravity the distance of the center of gravity from this wall is three feet this is given this is three feet remember and the length of the ladder is the length of the ladder is 10 feet this is given as 10 feet so this is the free body diagram now since the ladder is in equilibrium it is just on the verge of slipping so we will have the maximum friction at point a so um, but before slipping the system is in equilibrium so we can apply the equilibrium conditions so now uh, I'm going to apply the summation of forces along x that must be equals to zero so let's assume that this is my positive x this is my positive y so towards the right is our positive direction so nb is acting towards the positive x so I will write plus nb and this friction force this is acting towards the left so this is minus so I will write minus mu s times n a and this is equal to zero and from this we can write that n b is equal to mu s times n a now we can apply the summation of forces along y equals to zero and in the upward direction that is our positive vertical uh, assumed direction so now as we can see that n a is acting in the positive direction and weight is acting in the negative direction so we will have n a minus 180 this is equal to 0 and and a is equal to 180 pounds so then the normal reaction at point a is 180 pounds this is equal to 180 and now we know and b in terms of and a so we can write that and b we can write that and b is equal to mu s times 180 or we can say that and b is 180 mu s let me write it is 180 mu s now if we apply the summation of moment about point a the summation of moment about point a this must also be equals to zero if the system is in equilibrium and let's assume that the counterclockwise moment is positive so now as we can see that uh, this and b this is producing the clockwise moment so it's going to produce the negative moment since the clockwise moment is negative so we will write minus and b 
and the perpendicular distance of NB from that point A is this distance. This is the perpendicular distance. So this will be the moment arm. And this distance, if we consider this as a right angle triangle, then this word, this perpendicular distance of NB from point A is the sine component of the length of the ladder. So this is, this is 10, 10 sine of theta. This length. This is 10 sine of theta. So I will multiply this and be with 10 sine of theta. Now this weight is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point A. So I will write plus 180. And the perpendicular distance of this weight from that point A is this distance. So this whole distance, this whole distance is the cos component of this 10 feet. So we can write this is 10 cos of theta. So the perpendicular distance of this 180 pound from that point A is this distance. So this distance will be uh, this whole distance minus this 3 feet. So this small distance, this small distance, this is 10 cos of theta minus 3 feet. So now the perpendicular distance of 180 pounds from that point A is this distance. So this is the moment arm. So we will multiply this 180 with 10 cos of theta minus 3 and this will be equal to 0. So now we know that NB is 180 times mu s. So in, in place of NB we can write that this is 180 times mu s. So I will replace this. So we will have minus 180 times mu s. And if, uh, if I divide this whole equation by 180. So 180 will cancel out. This 180 will cancel out. So we will be left with minus mu s into 10 sine of theta and this and this will become 0 and from this we can write that minus 10 mu s sine of theta and here we have 1 now so if I multiply this 10 inside so we will have 10 cos of theta minus 3 and this is equal to 0 so now this is the general equation for both the problems now the solution for uh, problem 816 uh, needs some calculation, needs some further steps and the solution of problem 817 can be determined now. Now in the problem 817 we are given that theta is equal to 60 degrees. This is for problem 817. So theta is given in problem 817, theta is equal to 60 degrees and we are required to find mu s. In this problem, everything remains the same, but it says that determine the coefficient of static friction between the paired at A and the ground, and the angle is 60 degrees. So now in this equation, I will put this theta equals to 60 degrees. So now this will be uh, minus 10 mu s sine of 60 plus 10 cos of 60 minus 3 this is equal to 0 and from this we can write that minus 10 mu s sine of 60 equals to 3 minus 10 cos of 60 dividing both sides of the equation by minus 10 sine of 60 minus 10 sine of 60 so this will cancel out we will be left with mu s so from this we can say that mu s is equal to this ratio so this ratio is 3 minus 10 cos of 60 divided by minus 10 sine of 60 so mu s now mu s is equal to 0 0.231 this is the pro the solution of problem 817 now for problem 816 uh, for problem 816 we have to find determine the inclination angle theta mu s is given so now in this equation mu s is given and theta is required so let me write that the solution of problem 816 so for problem 816 mu s is 0.4 and theta is required so now we have to plug in those values in this equation. So now we will have uh, minus 10 mu s is 0 0.4 sine of theta plus 10 
cos of theta minus 3 this is equal to 0 so now 10 into 10 into 0 0.4 is 4 so this is minus 4 sine of theta uh, minus 3 and let me bring this term to the other side of equation so this will be equal to minus 10 cos of theta and now if I multiply both sides of equation with minus 1 if I multiply this with minus 1 and this with minus 1 this is cos of theta so let me multiply both sides with minus 1 so this will become plus 4 sine of theta plus 3 equals to 10 cos of theta now as we know that from trig trigonometric identities we know that cos square theta plus sine square theta this is equal to 1 and from this we can write that uh, cos, square, uh, cos square theta is equal to 1 minus sine sine squ uh, square theta and cos of theta is square root 1 minus sine square theta so now instead of cos of theta I will substitute this so now we will have 4 sine of theta plus 3 equals to 10 instead of cos of theta I need to write 1 minus sine cos theta under the square root and now after this I will take square on both side of, of the equation So now this is a plus b square formula so we can say that this is 4 sine of theta squared plus 3 square plus 2 into 4 sine of theta into 3 and this will be 10 square into 1 minus sine square theta under the square root whole square. So this square root will cancel out. And here we will have 4, 4 square is 16 sine square theta plus 9. And this will be 2 into 4 is 8 and 8 into 3 is 24. So 24 sine of theta. And this is 10 square is 100 into 1 minus sine square theta. And now if I multiply this 100 inside, so we will have. 16 sine square theta plus 24 sine theta let me rearrange this and plus 9 this is 100 minus 100 sine square theta and now let me bring both of these terms to the to this side of the equation so we will have 16 sine square theta and this term will become positive so let me write it with this sine square term so this will become plus 100 sine square theta then we will have plus 24 sine of theta plus 9 and this 100 on the other side will become minus so minus 100 this is equal to 0 so now we can add both of these terms this will become 116 sine square theta plus 24 sine of theta and this is minus uh, plus 9 minus 100 will become minus 91 so this is equal to 0 so now uh, we can say that this is uh, a quadratic equation let's say if uh, if p is equal to sine of theta so then this will be 116 uh, p square will be equal to sine square of theta so instead of sine square of theta we will write p square so 116 p square plus 24p minus 91 this is equal to 0 now this is a quadratic equation in terms of p so we have to find the roots of this equation so so the coefficient of x square or the coefficient of p square is 116 now the coefficient of uh, x or p to the power 1 is 24 and the constant is minus 91 so this gives us two roots uh, p is equal to minus 0 0.995 and or p is equal to 0 0.788 so 
so so this is actually p is equal to sine of theta so so we can say that sine of theta is equal to minus 0.995 or sine of theta is equal to 0 0.788 so now if i take sine inverse so theta will be equal to sine inverse of minus 0 0.995 or theta is equal to sine inverse 0 0.788 so sine inverse sine inverse of minus 0 0.995 this gives us theta minus 84.27 degrees and for the other one that is sine inverse 0 0.788 that gives us approximately theta equals to 52 but let me write it is 51.99 which is approximately equal to 52 degrees. Now we have to decide that which theta is accurate, whether this theta, whether this inclination is accurate or whether this inclination is accurate. So if we look into this diagram, so this base is three, more than three feet, right? So let's say if I, if I redraw that diagram, let's say this is our wall and this is the floor and this is our ladder so this is from that uh, diagram from this given diagram you can say that this base is greater than three feet so this length this is greater than three feet remember so now if, if the length of the ladder is 10 feet and if theta is, just ignore this minus sign. This minus sign will tell us, uh, will tell us that this angle is measured in the clockwise direction. So that minus sign tells us that the sense of the angle. So let's say now that this is 84.27. So now if this is 84.27, let, let's find this. The cause of this 10, this, this will be the cause of this so 10 cause of 84.27 this gives us 0 0.99 which is less than 3 feet but the problem in the problem we are given that this is greater than 3 feet some part of this is 3 feet so this means that this angle is not accurate now again if we say that the other angle is 52 so 10 cause of 52 this gives us 6.15 so this length is greater than 3 feet and this is 6.157 feet so this angle is accurate so theta the inclination of the ladder for the first problem is approximately equal to 52 if the ladder is on the verge of the slipping so for the first problem, the solution is theta is equal to 52 degrees. And for this problem, mu s is, uh, mu s is 0 0.231. So this is the solution of these two problems. I hope it will help you in your learning. Let me know in the comments if it helps in your learning. And do subscribe in Genius Academy uh, because it will help me to reach out many more students like you people.